<laughs> hey fellow folks, Emma Mae Jenkins here. Thank you so much for coming on over to the channel. I love you. You are so significant and your life is worth celebrating. I'm so thankful that you're here. The verse that I'm um, really excited to just focus in on today that will lead us to other verses, but this will be our main verse today, is found in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 7. And I'm going to be reading out of the NLT version. And it says, A person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. I'm going to read that one more time. A person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. So whenever I first read that, something that may come to mind is the thought that, okay, I know that whenever I'm full, it doesn't matter how yummy food looks on a table, I'm already satisfied, I'm already content. It could be the sweetest dessert ever. And I know that like, even if I eat it, I wouldn't enjoy it because I'm already full. Like, I'm, I refuse to eat that because I'm content, I'm satisfied, I'm full. There's no more room for anything else. But as you continue, it says, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. So if I'm starving, there could be something on the table in front of me, something on my plate right in front of me that I hate, like my least favorite foods on a plate, but I would be willing to eat it because I'm so hungry. I'm going to read this verse again. A person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. Whenever I am filled with the Holy Spirit, when I'm completely content, completely satisfied in the Lord, then it doesn't matter how sweet of a plate the world offers me, it's not going to look appetizing because I'm already filled. Like, I'm already full. But, like, I, like I'm already, I have, I have peace. I'm filled with hope. I'm filled with love. I'm filled with joy. I'm filled with acceptance and adoration. I'm sealed in His approval and His spirit. But if I don't know how loved I am, if I don't know where peace is, if I don't have hope, if I'm trying to find a place, a place of acceptance anywhere I can get it, the world could offer it to me in the most least appetizing way before me. But if I am empty and starving for acceptance, starving for love, starving for approval, starving for peace, then even if it's the worst offer that the world could give, which will leave me thirsty again, will leave me hungry again, I'm willing to take it. It could be so bitter, but I'm willing to take it because I'm hungry. I'm hungry for it, and it's all I know. A person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. Psalm 23, in verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Another version says, The Lord is my shepherd. In him I lack no good thing. In him I'm full. <laughs> Verse 5, it says, The Lord overflows my cup. He overflows my cup with his presence because when I'm filled with my spirit, when I'm filled with his spirit, my body is his home. I'm filled with his presence. I'm fully satisfied. His peace rules in my heart because I'm a member of his body and called to peace. Like I, I am filled. Paul prays over the church of Ephesus in, in Ephesians 1.18. I pray that your hearts may be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope that you have in the Lord. Flooded. Like that's who God is. He, he's the overflowing, lack no good thing flooded type of God. I am fully content, fully satisfied. So it doesn't matter how sweet of an offer the world gives, I'm going to refuse it because I know that it's only in the Lord I actually lack no good thing. Psalm 103, the Lord fills my life with good things. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name and forget not all of his benefits, that he satisfied my deepest hunger. In John 4, 
13 through 14, Jesus is talking to um, the Samaritan woman at the well. And let me just share what he, what he said to her. It says in verse 13, Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. And he's referring to the water that's in the well, that she would go at the middle of the day to draw water from the well. He said, anyone who drinks this water, the water that the earth, that the world can provide, you're going to be thirsty again. Verse 14, but those who drink the water I get, Jesus says, will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. So God's like, the world's going to offer you things that look appetizing. The world's going to offer you things that say they're going to fill you. The, words, the world is going to offer you things that they may satisfy you, but it's not going to satisfy you long term. But he says, what I give you, you'll never be thirsty again. You'll refuse the sweetest offers from the world because you, like it says in Psalm 34, 8, have tasted and seen that the Lord is good and you are blessed as you take refuge in him. Jesus says again in John 6, 35, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We lack no good thing. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for everything that you do flows from it. Just like how what I eat, like what, how I feel my body physically, it determines the type of energy that I have. It determines the, like, how strong I am it it like it determines a lot the um, type of food that I feel my body with and in the same way the food just as the food that I eat will determine the strength I have um, and the appetite that I develop it, that applies spiritually as well where I'm finding my peace where I'm finding my acceptance where I'm finding my hope and my love how I'm fueling that desire deep within me, it's gonna determine the strength that I have and it's gonna determine the appetite that I develop. So if I keep going to the world to fuel my desire to be loved and wanted and accepted and seen and valued, well, then that's gonna reflect in my strength. My strength is gonna continually be weary and burdened because the world is going to continually let me down. I'll go on highs Feel accepted whenever someone comments that I'm beautiful. Feel accepted whenever someone, like, I have a good conversation with somebody. Feel accepted whenever someone, fill in the blank. But people are fickle. In this world, we will have trouble. But Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus says, in me, you'll never go hungry. You'll never go thirsty because in me, you lack no good thing. Come taste and see that I am good. Be blessed as you take refuge in me. In me you have peace, you have joy, you have acceptance, you have love that cannot be taken away from you. And so whenever you go to the Lord and are led by his spirit and are filled with a desire for him, your energy will begin to reflect that. His joy is now my strength. His peace is now what keeps me steady and calm. How powerful is that? His love casts out my fear. That's the strength I'm running on. I'm running on the strength now that his grace is sufficient for me and his power is made perfect in my weaknesses so I can boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses. Like, how, how freeing. When I know this truth, I am set free from feeling as though I have to fuel my desire from a world that cannot fuel it the way, it was, the way that I was made to be fueled. When I am filled with the Spirit and filled with focus on the Lord and nourished by His Word, then even the things that seem most appetizing offered by the world will be nothing in comparison to the meal that the Lord has offered. A person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. So what I fuel myself with, I'll begin to build an appetite for. So... If I begin to fuel myself with what the world offers, my appetite will grow for what the world offers. And things that the world offers is, everyone's wearing that. So I guess I have to wear that too to be cool. I have to wear that too to be accepted. I have to wear that too to be thought of a certain way. 
the things the world offers is doing things in romantic relationships that everyone does because that's how I'm going to get loved. That's how I'm going to be told I'm beautiful. Things the world offers is watching and listening to what everyone is watching and listening. Things the world offers is feeding on jealousy and comparison, feeding on control, feeding on approval from people, feeding on pride, feeding on what feels good in the moment. And again, those things have their highs. I'll feel full for a little while, but I'll get hungry again. Why? Because I was made to be loved. I was made to walk in peace. I was made to walk in relationship. I was made to walk in community. I was made to walk in hope. But if I'm building up an appetite to find those things in the world, I'm going to constantly be let down, just as Jesus says, if you drink from this well, you're going to keep being, you're going to keep getting thirsty. He said, but come to me, y'all were called to feed on Christ. In him, we're fully satisfied and in him, we never go, go hungry. We were made by him and for him. So looking anywhere but him for satisfaction will always fall short. Those who are full refuse honey those who are hungry, they eat even the bitter things and the bitter things taste sweet to them. I invite you to search your heart and those desires that God put in you, those desires to be loved, to be accepted, to be seen, to be confident, to have peace. Those are beautiful things. God put those things in you. But where you go to seek for those appetites to be satisfied, that's a big decision. Because going to the world is gonna leave you hungry again. It's gonna leave you discontent. It's gonna leave you unsatisfied. And it is gonna fuel energy to you, but it's not gonna be energy that lasts. Because it's from a world that's troubled, it's from people that are fickle. But if you go to the Lord, it says in Romans 8 that when our minds are governed by his spirit, we are led in life and peace. When I go to the Lord to fuel that appetite, I'm able to rest in the fact that I'm loved by God. Wow. He is my peace that surpasses all understanding. His love casts out all fear of what people think of me. In him, I lack no good thing. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are you who takes refuge in him. I pray, this is my prayer for you this week, that you would be so filled with his spirit, so filled with satisfaction from his word, so filled with the hope that he gives, so filled with the love that he so passionately has for you that he died on a cross, rose again, <laughs> so that you may have life if you believe in him and put your trust in him. That, that will quench every thirst that you have and it will satisfy every hunger that you have. Continuing in that verse, even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. You notice that the things that the world offers to try and meet those eternal desires, it's actually bitter in comparison to how good the meal that Christ offers is. It's so sweet. And then this meal is so good that you can't help but share it with people. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And then I, I just had such a good meal. You better believe I'm telling everybody about this meal I just ate. This meal of hope and peace and love and joy that never runs out, ever. And it's offered to you. There's a seat at the table, but you get to decide whether or not you sit down and you eat the meal that the Lord is offering to you that the world simply can't provide. God wants to give you something deeper. He wants to give you love that never fails, hope that's an anchor firm and secure and peace that simply cannot be taken from the world because the world didn't give it. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are so loved and I pray that you may be filled with the Lord.
so that even the sweetest things that are offered to you that aren't from him, you refuse it. You refuse it. You are so loved. I pray that you'll have the best week ever. Comment down below how you were encouraged, what content you'd like to see moving forward. Give this video a thumbs up and go follow me on the socials, 1 Corinthians 13 underscore love. Y'all rock my socks. Bye everyone.